everyone, I'm Ellie and welcome to Sewing Basics. This series is going to teach you the very basics of cosplay sewing. Everything from learning how to use your machine to more complex and detailed stitches. This is a great series if you're just starting out and I hope to go over lots of very important and very useful tips and tools. So I hope you'll stick along with me for the long run. Today we are going to be focusing on how to use your sewing machine and what sort of tools I find necessary when I'm sewing. So I hope you guys are ready. Let's hop right in and start learning. These are some of the tools I use most frequently while I'm sewing. Sharp scissors, these are for cutting fabric only, nothing else. Craft scissors for cutting everything but fabric. Thread, you'll always need a different color for every project but I always have white and black on hand since they can work on a pinch for almost anything. You'll also want to have straight pins, machine needles, and hand needles. Lastly, I have a soft tape measure and a ruler along with a pencil and some fabric markers. Every sewing machine is a bit different, however they all have the same basic features. First, the presser foot, the needle, and the feed dogs. These are the basic working bits of your machine. The feed dogs are the grippy bits beneath your needle that pull the fabric along as you sew. The presser foot keeps the fabric flat and pressed against the feed dogs. There are many types of presser feet that do different things, but the one here is the most basic. And of course, the needle is what punctures your fabric and sews. Beneath those bits and bobs is your bobbin. This is arguably the most important part of your machine as it's what makes your stitches actually stay in your fabric. A sewing machine works by creating lots of little loops with one thread running through them to keep them in place. The bobbin thread is the one that stays in place while your needle thread makes the loops. This area consists of a bobbin which holds your thread, a bobbin casing that you put the bobbin in, and the holder which holds it all together. As you place your bobbin into the bobbin casing, be aware of what direction it's spinning. The bobbin should spin the opposite direction that the thread is going. I know it's a little confusing that the bobbin should go the opposite direction as your thread, but trust me, if you do this, it'll save you a bunch of time and a bunch of hassle. When I finally learned this, my machine stopped acting up, I didn't get any more nasty threads, or it didn't just lock up and stop sewing on me. So I definitely suggest that you keep an eye on what way your bobbin is spinning. Like I said before, all machines are different, but most will thread the same way. You have a spool of thread on top of the machine, usually held in place with some sort of placeholder. The thread then goes into the machine through the tension discs, which control how much thread your needle gets at a time, back up through the machine, then down into your needle. If you're using a new machine or have never threaded a sewing machine before, take a look at your user's manual that comes with the machine. It'll show you a very detailed picture of how to thread your specific machine to make sure it works perfectly. Now let's take a look at the buttons on our machine. The ones you'll be using the most are straight stitch, zigzag stitch, length adjustment, and back stitch. The back stitch might be the most important since you want to use it at the beginning and end of each stitch to lock it into place. Now that we know how our machine works, I know we want to jump right in and start sewing right away. But we have a few more things to practice first. So let's de-thread our machine and take out our bobbin. I have created some shapes that we are going to be sewing on. There's a PDF of this in the description that you're more than welcome to print out and print it out as many times as you'd like. This is just going to go on normal paper and we are going to use these shapes to practice our stitching. First, we're going to start with a square. You'll place your pattern onto your machine and line it up with the line in the middle of your presser foot. Next, you'll lower the presser foot and put the needle into the paper using the knob on the side of your machine. Now, using your pedal, you can begin to stitch. I suggest you take as much time as you need. We're not going for speed here, we're going for accuracy, and we want our stitches to look as perfect as possible. When we get to the corner of the square, we want to once again use the knob on the side of our machine to put the needle into the paper. We will lift our presser foot and then turn the paper and then you can lower the presser foot and begin stitching again. This will give you a very sharp turn. This is an important thing to learn since there are lots of sharp turns in regular sewing. After you've done a few shapes with some straight lines and some corners, I suggest trying out a few shapes with some curves. 
Curves are a lot different than straight lines and can be very, very challenging, especially the tighter your curves get. So I suggest trying them quite a few times. You can practice with these shapes as many times as you like, and I definitely suggest trying it out until you feel comfortable and feel like you know how your machine works. And then we can actually begin sewing with some thread and fabric. But we won't do that this week. That's going to be coming next week. So I will see you all then. Make sure you subscribe and like, and let me know if you find this series helpful. Um, if you do, please just let me know in the comments so that way I know to continue making this series. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. Keep sewing, stay positive, and have fun. I will see you all next time.